Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, or you know, welcome to the channel, of course, if it's your first time. We're going to watch the Ricky Gervais Show Season 3, Episode 13, Munchies. Well, I know all about the Munchies. I've, uh, I've been attacked by them many, many, many times. Um, so, I don't know if this show is going to be the same kind of Munchies, you know. That, that I suffer from seems seemingly chronically <laughs> or something else, but we're going to have to watch it and see. So this is episode 13. So this is the end of season two. It's been a pretty funny season. Uh, they've all been, you know, there really hasn't been much difference in the two seasons. They're, they're all basically the same thing. It's all, you know, clips from the radio show, I guess, or the podcast put to animation um i don't even think some of them are from the same show it's all one show i think it's just clips from various shows but it's been pretty funny <laughs> and the animation's been pretty good uh better than nothing nobody wants to watch a blank screen unless you're trying to go to sleep which a lot of people seem to use these videos to do so i don't know i have other techniques of putting me to sleep that I kind of rely on, or when necessary. So let's just get on with it there. The Ricky Gervais Show, Season 2, Episode 3, Munchies. I'm all set. Let's break this down for now. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is one of them. Testing, is that all right? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Robert Nozick did this thing that if you could go into a flotation tank and you led a whole virtual life, and it was the best life possible. You did exactly what you've always wanted. You became the person you wanted to be. You did the best things you could ever dream of doing, and you literally couldn't tell the difference. So it was your life, OK? And you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have. You could pre-program it. Would you get into that tank knowing what you know now, knowing that you would have the best life ever, with no heartache, no upset, no, no loved ones dying? So what's happening when, when I'm sort of having a packet of munchies? Yeah. It, am I having them or are they imaginary? They're imaginary, but you can't tell the difference. It's the best packet of munchies we've ever had. I love the fact that you went into the flotation <laughs> tank uh, and your one proviso was, are munchies as good? <laughs> yeah. No, Absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basic, You've got to yeah. pre-program your life. That's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah. when you can't you do. go wrong. You do. You enjoy them. You are the... You're the... It's the life you'd ever want to live. And yeah, you're a living it. That. <laughs> Sorry? A bit dangerous. Why? why? Go on, why? Just, um I don't know, because sometimes I think... Things don't happen for the best, right? Right. Sometimes you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about. Ah, oh, but what this would is have perfect. Happened. No, this is built in because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, that things just keep getting better or staying so as you good. Never, you never have a bad day. You never have a bad day. But how long would that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't. You're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't. Know, you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life, and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. We well, just have <laughs> munches every day. And well, yeah, you'd get in it then. You'd get in it. If you if you don't know you've got in this tank. If I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go right, stick him in the tank now. And then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out, uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day, we'll go and do something nice. Right. Well, you're meant to be at work. She goes, no, I don't have to go in today. 
Right. Like, All right, let's yeah. go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any any life, you could do anything, and you chose the exact life you've got now, except Suzanne's got a day off. Now, <laughs> I both love that. Well, I was a bit suspicious, of... though, that she's just taking a day off. No way, it's not happening now. It's not happening, really happening. You could do anything you like. But I like the fact now you're even questioning you're not in the tank and why has Suzanne got a day off, right? <laughs> now, I love that because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice, happy, satisfied, whatever you want to do it, contented person who's got the perfect life. However, it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities. For example... You wake up, there's the munch, it's sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you go, why aren't you at work? Oh, she goes to off. you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought of that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You just no, got no, some munches for <laughs> breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, OK. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't, you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, yeah. let's have a nice roti yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you, you arrive get, there? When well, you get there, yeah. uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I going to give him too much money? I don't know right. the currency well enough yet. I don't know how much More things More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane... Scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens <laughs> in real life. Okay, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? Okay. Because you don't you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it because mm. that's sometimes part of it. Right. Yeah. Right? Okay. So anticipation. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time, isn't it? Then looking back at the journey and going, yeah. how did I get here? Okay. Well, right. can I ask a question? Because sorry, I'm just what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea, okay? You can design your perfect life. But I prefer not to well, know I'm doing it. No, you, you don't know. Wouldn't. But I you want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, okay? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. We're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but munches. What else? We've got, got munches, munches and we've got sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life of the, your ultimate life? Yeah, I, I, I don't like this idea. Suddenly, Suzanne's never at work. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just think you need, you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right, right. But the difference is when I next get British gas round, they go, "Oh, Mr. Bilkinson, yes." The, the, oh my God! The boiler so is fixed. Like no, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no. still goes wrong in no, your dream, but, but you it gets fixed. But you don't yes. even need a boiler. <laughs> you can be the perfect temperature. But this all isn't the time. anymore. I don't. I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change. But you in won't realise. It won't feel like change. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not. He's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head. No, he's got a problem uh, hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he needs to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. <laughs> right, that is your problem hole. <laughs> so, if someone comes up and they go, I've fixed your boiler. Sorry, can I just say, well, ask No, one, let, let him speak. Let for... me well, ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for... You, no, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole... Is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yes. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on. Right. So it's better to have... You've got a problem <laughs> hole in your head. Right. Yeah. So you stuff in a problem into the problem hole. Okay, yeah, goes. okay. Now, all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. Right. right. Is that good or bad? But that's not true, is it? The problem <laughs> hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right, right. right. No, but that's Shut not... up, Ricky. Let him uh, explain. Now, now, Ricky, I'd say his problems... Uh, not even problems. Well, how big is his problem hole? Same size as mine. Same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of Skittles, I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> Right, but why, Shut what, up! Let but, him speak. But, but, he's but, just but, expanding on his idea. Why do you what keep is his problem? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little Skittles? Those are problems. You you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly, or someone breathing <laughs> loudly, or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, oh, that doesn't matter. Like you say, to you, the boiler is like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. It is. And that's why the problem ball is growing. <laughs> it's a bo it's got a gene, a ball and a hole. So the problem there's, ball... No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me ask... I want to clarify this. 
the problem ball <laughs> exists in life that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem <laughs> hole, <laughs> down the problem tube, into and the bounce, problem bounce gene. Into the problem gene. Into, right, now then, now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got, has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> or is it always just... Can ladies have a pair of problem balls? <laughs> no, because Hitler had one uh, problem ball, didn't he? But uh, c could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls is my question to you. But, and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you could have you could you, have, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying it, you, okay, okay, okay. So, suppose I came to you and said, "Listen, um, well, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country might have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I'd, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it, and I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole, and he, and 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 hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first? Is my question. <laughs> well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right. He'd say, right. Take your problem jeans off. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want to see your problem hole oh. clearly. But he would fish. He would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem he ball, would. wouldn't he? Well, well, he'd, well, he'd, he'd, well, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger in the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. OK, so, so Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do towards enjoying your life? I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it. It's after. It's like that holiday. When I what was on holiday. What do you mean holiday. you don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it? It's after. What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say like you, the holiday. I've just so been you enjoy away. coming on, off the holiday. What? No, I want to hear it. You, you enjoy the holiday. You didn't when, enjoy the when holiday. When I'm there, I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, there was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is the stonefish in it? <laughs> Right? Now, you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas, because the bites have gone. They're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well, hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's yeah. an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it, because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to have fleas on me again. Yeah. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant, yeah. I go, right, what am I going to do here? Yeah. Right, well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops, great. Wonder how much they give you because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now I have the lamb chops. It comes with extra veg. I eat it. I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted. It's gone out the window. I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you enjoyed the lamb chops. You enjoyed the lamb chops. You enjoyed. You can only so get packed so much. Enjoy. If you're enjoying all, all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. <laughs> no, because I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but, you... but you didn't want a pudding or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. Yeah, and then it's, it's yeah, ruined. But what's, I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal, you had some lovely lamb chops, you enjoyed the hour. Because when I read that they had, a, a, like, profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought, I fancy a couple of them. Yeah. And, and, then it, you... and the chance has gone. I'm probably not coming back to this, this restaurant. Yeah, now, but you haven't missed a chance. You had the chance. You didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's What's not like problem? you didn't... I had a spicy sausage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, the, th the problem was, Go I on. was enjoying it, but I thought, this is this is the spicy sausage I've ever eaten. Right. <laughs> now, I could only enjoy that the next day, night, when I knew that it's the gone through my body, there hasn't been a problem. So I go, that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> that was a nice sausage! But then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it, because you wouldn't have the trauma of the next night, because you'd live through it, and now you're just enjoying the, the lovely problem... spiciness and the sausiness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you... Go on. Auntie Nora, <laughs> I've told you she prepares all the food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, now, she, what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now, she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She right. thinks I got the mix just right there. The spices yeah. are good. The yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening. I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? Don't know. Just want the same. She was expecting too much. And that's the problem. If I had that mm. spicy sausage again, yeah. it's never going to live up to it. So forget the spicy <laughs> sausage. I've had it. I've experienced it. So you right. never Someone says, 
Well, it depends. So do you have anything twice ever? Maybe Jesus. not. But this is insane, Carl, well, because no... aside from you and your Auntie Norma and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or are all as weird as one another, why are you phoning her up and asking her what she's having for tea? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, that that not only the... what, it's that's, actually, I'm wondering yeah. what you're going to do on Thursday as well. That... I'll make a note of it in the Auntie Norma <laughs> that, food diary. That, 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 that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to go, right, oh, fucking well, hell. Why else you say But then he's phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's two calls that week. Well, it's just Just read her journal. Now, the question is, is it better to enjoy something once and not again than not at all. But you're an idiot because you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. That's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby, have I? That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing. (laughs) I did the boxing. I did... uh, What else have I done? Mm, that yeah. is it. I think that's what but, it is. But, but that's what I'm saying, though. I soon get bored. And that's it's like how you enjoy... You know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy the last one more than... Well, that doesn't make sense. That goes c- totally counter to your argument. No, because it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first you, one's so, your favourite. No, so, hold on. One. So, if you do have one munchie... Oh, I'll go, yeah, there's a munchie, mate. You no. go, I'm not going to take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um, but what is... Well, no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all. Don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie. Have the first munchie. There but you I'm go. I'm going to have one, and I'm, I'm going to get a taste for them, and I'll probably want another. Well, no, that, they're my munchies, aren't they? No, I'll Do keep you... them, then. Forget it. Well, look, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I prefer, I prefer to go, do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do, you enjoy the la- okay, then why do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the, the first one. curry, but not the second curry. But you know curry. it's the last one. Because it's, no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going, that's for Monday, that's for Tuesday, that's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about 12 in a packet. OK. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really fast. <laughs> you shove the first four in! Without right. even thinking about what right. I'm eating. Yeah. Now, when, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, oh, I'm liking this. But you know, hold on, last what, one? every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. Them? Yeah. So, hold on, though, you must enjoy a packet of munchies regularly, then? Not as often as you think. The well, I don't know. <laughs> when well, no as I think, I don't know. So tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after have sort of maybe once a month. So, every month, you look forward to a lovely packet of munchies. And the same experience. You yeah, like the, the first end, one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations is a fucking packet of munches once a month. Fuck me. <laughs> what do you think happiness is? Um, again, you, you only know the happiness because of the badness. You've well, got to have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I, I agree with you on this because it, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just, tr- just from my own experience, working for summer does feel better because you've got, a, you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely believe that. But you need, you need the mixture, don't you? So you so you find out what you what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. Yeah, but you can't you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say you? life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus, no, but, it, but it is, isn't it? There's there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. The raisin no, 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 no. With, with chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now what no, I'm saying metaphorically, is metaphorically, what what's the like, yeah? Well, I'm actually I'm using... named what revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well, I'm telling you because it works in life. Go on then. But the revel you like is raisins? there. Go on. Well, well, maybe, if you have what? enough raisin ones, yeah. you eventually go, do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. Well, what would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? <sighs> uh, when I watched Jim will fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted. Did they? But what would you have requested? But I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most oh, of the kids were. Oh God! It's a kid exhausting. like whistling. They brought out this Roger Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because they look at it. They go, "Can you fix it for me to go into space?" No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah. So that's I mean? why I wouldn't write in because. Whatever you ask for, you're always going to get a watered-down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? 
There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One oh, thing. Jesus. Just Christ. one thing. To choose one thing, please. <laughs> my name was Brett. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's extraordinary. No, there is no predicting that. Okay, you know what? I can make that dream come yeah, true for you right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking Pilkington. No, but Pilkington. No, that doesn't work either, because like then well, I, not, told, because I, told okay. me, I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot they, that. What, they went along with it? Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on. And they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing! So you've had that dream come true. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you. Things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> when I was on holiday recently, yeah. I got talking to an old fella, because mm. where, where I went, it's mainly for old people. Mm-hmm. Um... I got chatting with him. Uh, you could tell he had a lot of money. Yeah. He sort of tanned. He had um, that sort of um, rouge-coloured sort of jeans. Oh, yeah. Which is always sort tell, of... Tell-tell sign. It's, it's kind of like he's got money. Yeah. And... Um, the uh, red jeans are twice as much there. That's OK, I've got money. Yeah, it's sort of... It's either that colour or yellow. But you yeah. can carry it off when you're an old man, and especially with the tan, you think, yeah, he's got a few... Oh, I'm a, I'm a millionaire. Do you have any yellow jeans? Uh, we've got one pair, sir, but they're no the most expensive. Options. Yeah, they're, they're in the back room. Um, uh, could I just see your your bank account first? There is. Oh, yeah, you can afford yellow jeans, all right, sir. Come this way. So I got talking to him, and it turns out he had a uh, cruise ship. Right. Loads of money. Mm. Now I was chatting to him for about ten minutes. Yeah. What so colour was his jacket? Said very, he didn't have a jacket on, just a white shirt. Hmm. He's wearing red jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, sort of leather, leather slip-on shoes, that I can remember. And um, how old is he? It's hard to tell, because he, he was well tanned. Right. Um, was he an attractive man? He's a good-looking fella. Uh, so he's rich, so you saw this rich, good-looking bloke with just a shirt on? Oh, he had a shirt and his, his pink yeah. pants. His pink so, pants, and he okay. just went over what? and struck up a conversation with I don't know, why did you notice his, what um, colour the crotch area was? What? <laughs> why did you notice what you were looking very much at the eyes? I, I can see why you could see if you're looking at his face, you could see a white shirt. But why, why could you see you what colour this is what I'm the you. fabric around his chest was? Wearing. You saw a good-looking old man sat at the bar. You went up and bought him a drink. Right? Yeah, you oh, saw. So, you I was noticed for the barbecue to open. Right. right. Okay. And you I got noticed the man. So you <laughs> noticed the so man's trousers. No. Yeah. No. I was annoyed. I right. don't like late nights on holiday. Right. Okay. With jet lag. Suzanne said, let's go down there early tonight. Right. I get there, I find out the barbecue's not for another 40 odd minutes. What time was the it? The holiday rep. Uh, well, I don't know, it starts at 8. Well, so you're noticing people, you're minutes. noticing old men's uh, genital coverings, but you don't know what fucking time it is. Yeah, but. Get what your I'm story saying, straight. What I'm saying to you is the right. reason I noticed his pants is because what he was talking about, right. there was no reference points. I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. Right. He what was he talking about for your eyes to wander down to his penis, is what I'm trying to say. What made you look at his penis? Because I got bored. <laughs> 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 I didn't know. What I'm trying to say to you is, is his reference points. I had no idea and what, what was he was going he talking on about. When it? you're talking to a stranger, mm. aren't you meant to keep it above the waist? Keep it. Uh, Looking at his bollocks. Keep it erect. <laughs> <laughs> I made Carl laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was uh, the Ricky Gervais Show, Season 2, Episode 13, Munchies. Apparently munchies are chips or crisps, not, not the munchies I was thinking of, you know, when you get the munchies. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I had some, some good bits, some looks into the mind of Carl. <laughs> I don't know if it's scary or funny or worrisome. I mean, these shows are a long time ago. I'm sure something would have happened. It would have happened a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you like the video. You're going to subscribe to the channel. You know, put on your notifications and stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a nice day. <laughs>